You're a proponent of the Princeton University learning philosophy, 70-20-10. Um, could you just explain a bit more about that and why you see it as being so important? Yeah, sure. I think it's a really good learning model. First of all, I wouldn't call it the Princeton University model. I, I, Princeton did some early work, in fact a researcher at Princeton, who's now an emeritus professor in Canada, uh, did some early work. But I think the 70-20-10 the model really came out of the Centre for Creative Leadership okay. in North Carolina. Uh, uh, the, they did some work uh, in the mid-90s, in fact published a book, Morgan McCall and his colleagues published a book in the uh, mid-90s and they talked about the 70-20-10 model there. But in fact it's been adopted by, last count from me, from some researchers working in Australia, was about 60 companies, glo big global companies that have adopted 70-20-10. And it's based on the principles that we learn, adults learn about 70% of what they need to know, they learn by doing their jobs. They learn about 20% through other people, through colleagues, through knowing the right person to write, ask the right question, it might be through informal coaching and mentoring and all sorts of other ways. And they learn about 10% through formal, formal structured learning. And one can't be precious about that, that uh, breakup in terms of 70, 20, 10, you know, for different contexts, different organizations, it'll vary. But actually it aligns really closely with the work that Jay Cross did in the background research for his informal learning book when he identified that about 80% of learning is informal and about 20% is formal. So what I see 70-20-10 as is just a really good framework to think about how workforce development happens and not to spend all your money and all your resources and all your focus on that 10% and start to think about what tools do you need, what approaches do you need that can help people in the workplace, and then all that whole big 20%, or I think it'll probably grow, but that social learning area in terms of how do you put people together and find experts quickly in the organisation and outside the organisation and so on. So I think 70-20-10 is a really good model, and I've spent a lot of my time in the last year working with organisations, uh, both provider organisations and big corporates on 70-20-10. In fact, I'm in Paris in a couple of weeks time doing a workshop for a, a big corporate organisation, big global organisation on 70-20-10. So yeah, I think it's a, it, it's a really good framework, but as I say, it's good to use as a framework, as a model, and not as a recipe. And I've done lots of workshops and lots of seminars where people have said, have come up to me afterwards and said, or during a workshop have said, hey, this is, this is sort of the way we'd like, we think about it, but we haven't had a label to put on it. So there's lots of organisations that are moving that way. Uh, you know, with the awareness uh, around informal learning and so on, and moving into how can we support people in the workplace? How can we give people access to what they need to do their jobs just in time, exactly when they need it? How can we provide them with help exactly when they need it, at the point of need? Uh, and there are some good organisations that provide performance support solutions that are really focused around point of need learning. And I, I think that's a hugely growing uh, industry. I think it's a, there's a huge demand that's emerging for that point of need learning.